Hey guys, it's uh, Rockroy97. Uh, uh, Terry Fan has issued. He's uh, Terry Fan's issued a challenge for uh, uh, people to rank their uh, top five or ten best uh, wrestling pay-per-views of all time. I'm gonna give my top five because, well, I I haven't watched I haven't watched that many wrestling pay-per-views, but there are a couple that always have sticked out to me. And most of them are uh, WWE or slash WWF uh, pay-per-views, with uh, two exceptions. You might notice that TNA is not going to be on here because I have really nothing against the promotion. I think it's a great idea that they're giving the WWE some competition, but I don't really watch TNA because, well, I don't have cable, so... Yeah. Here are my top five best uh, WWE slash ECW slash WCW pay-per-views of all time. Okay, uh, coming in at number five is, believe it or not, WWE Armageddon 06. This pay-per-view was pretty well balanced, in my opinion. I mean, it was, uh, it had a damn good, uh, lineup. I mean, it had the first, the first Inferno match. In like what, seven years or something. So that was a uh, really special. It ended a lot of feuds. Like at the time, um, Kane and MVP, who was a noob at the time, they had finally ended their feud in that infernal match. And uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy and the Undertaker were going through a really long feud at the time, so they finally ended that feud too. In the casket, no, not the casket match, the last ride match. And, uh, they had, uh, King Booker and Finley feuding with, uh, John Cena and Batista. That feud was practically brought to an end finally at the pay per view. And, uh, it, they had a John Cena involved in there, which was kind of a rarity because it was a SmackDown exclusive, a brand exclusive pay per view. They had the, uh, what else? The. They had the cruiserweight match between Gregory Helms and Jimmy Wang Yang, which actually wasn't a bad match. However, uh, the one match that everyone remembers this pay-per-view for would have to be the off-the-hook ladder match. That was originally supposed to be just a good old normal tag team match with uh, Paul London and Brian Kendrick, who were the WWE tag team champions at the time, going up against uh, William Regal and Dave Taylor. When Theodore Long came out and said he was giving the fans a Christmas gift. And that Christmas gift said he was changing the match into a ladder match. And adding two more teams, which would be M and M. They were they reunited at the pay-per-view. Only to break up three months later because Joey Mercury was fired. Good riddance. Anyway. And, uh, the Hardy Boys. And that match was just friggin' awesome. They put on the ladder match DVD as uh, well. And uh, it was a worthy addition. It really was great. Like, no one expected London and Kendrick to win. Everyone thought they were screwed. Everyone thought the Hardys were going to win, or maybe M and M were. And London and Kendrick just came out of nowhere and won fair and square. I mean, that was just off the hook. Oh, however, however during the match, uh, Joey Mercury... Got that was also the match where Joey Mercury severely injured his nose, where they had the they had the ladder placed almost like a teeter totter in between the another ladder where they had Eminem and the Hardys brawling, and uh, Jeff Hardy had a swanton bomb that was supposed to like knock everyone to brawl out. However, instead, uh, Johnny Nitro was like looking up, he said, when the ladder went flying. So it hit him in the throat, but not too hard. He said Joey Mercury was just looking down the whole time, and boom! Enough said. This pay per view just was. I mean, it was so well balanced, in my opinion, it was uh, good enough to be placed on my uh, top five list. And, uh,. Up next is uh, number four on the list. Now, this is not an easy list to do, but number four would probably have to be WCW Starcade 1997. This was the company's biggest pay-per-view of all time, and a real turning point.
in the Monday Night Wars saga. Not much to say about this pay-per-view, other than everyone remembers it for its main event and the debut of Bret Hart, who left the WWF a month prior due to the Montreal Screwjob. Uh, Bret Hart was a special referee for the match earlier, so uh, they had uh, they had the match uh, between uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan and Sting for the WCW World Title. It was like everyone knew this was going to be the final battle between the New World Order and World Championship Wrestling. And a lot of people have criticized the main event due to the uh, due to the way it originally ended where uh, Hulk Hogan cheated to win against uh, Sting. Now I have no problem with uh, heels doing that to in order to gain more heat. But uh, pretty much if you've seen this match... You can pretty much like feel the electricity in the air that this is going to be the pay-per-view where the NWO finally gets their asses whipped or something. Because they had practically dominated the company for the entire past year. So, you can kind of tell that, uh, that something big was going to happen. However, uh, during the match, Hulk Hogan nailed the usual leg drop, which uh, what most people remember, but... What many people feel is like Sting should have kicked out and made him uh, tap out to the Scorpion Deathlock or something. That didn't happen. Instead, the referee kind of won two and three and declared Hulk Hogan still the winner. And all the fans are like, what? And then out of nowhere, Bret Hart comes out and announces that he'll take the referee's place, claiming that he made a fast count to prevent Sting from being screwed. Now, if you watch the, if you watch the uh, match. You'll probably see that the count doesn't uh, doesn't appear to be a fast count because I've seen the match and to me it looked normal. So Hart's protest didn't make sense. I'm not gonna go too into that because they had the creative ideas and stuff. Who knows? Maybe it was just a botch by the ref. Whatever. Anyways, to we'll make a long story short, Sting kicked Hogan's ass and finally won the WCW title and uh, caused the NWO to break up. It was just a real special pay-per-view, and a lot of people view it as WCW's peak. However, shortly after this, WCW got a little cocky, and a couple months later, WWF was starting to gain ground with its new Attitude Era, and WCW was just doing uh, the same old stuff they did, which eventually led to their downfall. Some people, while well, people say that Starcade 97 was WCW's peak, they also say it was the beginning of the long, long, long downfall. Still, it was great. It like has a magic to it that uh, very few other wrestling pay-per-views have. Uh, that very other uh, that that they have. It's also kind of infamous for a blooper in which uh, Michael Buffer, the boxing announcer, the guy that coined the term "Let's get ready to rumble," <laughs> he's in. He also made a botch at the pay-per-view where he called Brett the Hitman Hart, Brett Hitman Clark, when he's announcing him as a special referee. Ah, uh, good times. Well, anyway, 